Hey, everybody. Welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours call. I am your host, Jinx, and we are joined, as always, by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. Um, our protocol updates are on hold for a moment while uh, Mixmaster Fred finishes up with um, uh, his uh, call that he's currently on. So if anybody else has any ecosystem uh, or protocol based announcements that you would like to uh, drop in and feel free to do so in the meantime. Or we can all contemplate the longevity of cosmic time in the universe. No? Everybody going groovy this week? Sasquatch, you guys get an, uh, an answer to the questions that y'all brought up previously on uh, portal side of things? Yeah, thank you. Um, and big thank you to Art uh, for jumping on and diving deep with me after the call. So, continue to appreciate the support from Grove. And um, yeah, not a not a straightforward solution or answer to the question, but it's not a straightforward answer or question to ask either. I got gotcha. you. Arthur, while we're waiting for Fred, any updates on your side? Sorry, I just I just joined, so I actually don't know what was talked about. Nothing so far, because Fred's still on hold with the airlines. <laughs> all right, um, all right. Good day, everyone. So I guess a few things. Um, uh, okay, where do I start? All right. So one, uh, so I did this pitch a couple weeks ago at um, at MIT, and I'm going to be doing a similar pitch next week in Tampa. Uh, at the Arc Innovation Lab, um, so uh, I'm going to uh, again same same thesis. Grove is an ISP for the open internet, supporting multiple protocols with different varying groups of customers, with AI agents potentially being one of those customers. So that that's coming next week. I don't know if it's being recorded or anything, but it's a similar pitch in length and size, similar slides. Um, Beyond that, we were also invited to speak, uh, not to speak, to meet with a bunch of VCs and other CEOs of blockchain spaces in New York in November at, with Blockcelerate. Um, so we, uh, we, we will be doing that as well. That'll be myself and Fred and potentially Olshansky up in New York um, having those meetings. Um, regarding the, uh, the network, so this morning Mike put through the F-chains uh, chain ID, so all of those were passed. Uh, sorry, we're run through the governance transactions, so all of those should be made available uh, are now. And I believe Fred is working uh, through a playbook on how best uh, for, at least for Grove, to seamlessly move traffic from one set of chain IDs to another, given that um, we have to restate gigastakes for the new chain IDs. Um, uh, we all have providers for every single chain, including some some that have died, like OpBNB in the past and Bitcoin, which are also going to be back. Uh, this is going to cost the foundation just about thirty thousand dollars per month. This is all public information. Um, there is a spreadsheet that I can reshare um, that Fred shared earlier, but we've been using that as a master document. Um, we will be reevaluating this every three months. By we, it's Mike. He will be giving him feedback, and then he'll be making the ultimate decision 
on if he wants to continue supporting this for some or all of those chains. Um, so those should be going live um, in a rolling uh, fashion over the next couple of weeks. I know that some providers are already ready, so they're working with Fred to um, get these F chains launched and having the demand slowly trickle in or migrated over from the existing chains to those. Um, beyond beyond the F chains, the with respect to the uh, protocol upgrade, so there's 0 0.12, which is, has reached the adoption layer level needed uh, as of last night. Um, so we have enough to actually flip the switch on mainnet, but we want to do it on testnet. Um, so Olshansky is looking to uh, make sure, I guess he's working with stake nodes and with Ian uh, from Crypto Node Tools to make sure that they are all up to date so that we can at least do a set of governance transactions to change the RTTM value on testnet. Um, before we uh, make those changes on mainnet. And so the goal, to, I think, to do that is over the next week so that we can, Mike can then go ahead and change the RTTM values for the various chain IDs um, such that they uh, are more attached to real world, I guess, hardware limitations is how I think we put it together from what I remember. Um, so if a chain is harder to run, it might get more, uh, more tokens minted for uh, just a decentralized demand. Um, beyond that, um, yeah, I don't think, I think that's just about, um, just about everything. Uh, I will say that we have things moving forward with Google in a, in a good way. We are about to, I think the team is about a week out from launching, um, in the marketplace, um, the Google, Google's marketplace. And we had a very good meeting with our web three team, the heads of product engineering yesterday about a furthering and collaboration. It will take time, like everything else, when you work with these big partners. Um, we might do something sooner, uh, but uh, nothing really expected until Q2 of next year, given that they they have their own RPC initiative, but we are going to be involved in that RPC initiative as of this moment. How we're going to be involved, I cannot say in detail because it's not codified yet, but we are proactively working towards something there. I would say, Lee, let's leave that to this community call and not farther because it's like a, just a work in progress. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, um, regarding token price, I have no clue personally why what happened this week happened, but hey, that's a good sign. Um, but uh, so I won't comment on that beyond that. Uh, and I think that's it. I think that's just about like a rundown of everything the last five minutes. Let me know if you have questions. Sweet. Yeah, I'm looking at the charts uh, or looking at the uh, market volumes. Uh, looks like a lot of that was driven by uh, uh, the Korean exchanges. So hopefully that's a, a hint that we're going to see uh, the KRW pair soon. Purely speculation on my part, not any kind of a teaser, but uh, that would be super nice. Fred, protocol updates? Any more? Uh, I... Don't know what Art covered, so forgive me if I repeat myself or sure. repeat uh, ourselves here. Um, let me just scroll. I'm looking at the notes here. Here we go. So we're really in the phase where we're preparing for beta. Um, so we're just checking through on feature completeness on several features, those being the supplier staking fees, global mint reimbursement, application service limits, gateway unstaking delays, gateway and apps references. Historical parameters, module parameters, missing events, and over-servicing mitigation. So there are many, many, many things that are just kind of going down the checklist, and we really are making sure that they're rock solid. Um, protocol development, a little bit different than your typical application development, where we have to be sure. Um, and, and there has to be a lot of, you know, math. It, it's math in place, so um, it needs to work, no matter what. Uh, so that's really where the protocol is at. Um, did art cover path updates? Um, I can repeat too if, if necessary. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. So yeah, I mean, Shannon TLDR is uh, preparing for beta and, yeah. and, and we're making very good progress. Uh, on the path front, um, we are looking to have our first partner on board in the next couple of weeks. Um, we're really excited, and if anyone else is interested in being a quick and early adopter of PATH, we would love to have you onboarded as well for other gateways. Um, and we will be reaching out to all the existing gateways to uh, get up and onboard and on PATH. Uh, PATH is also the primary way that we want folks to interact and test with 
um, gateways on Shannon. So uh, that is replacing the, uh, the gateway server as it was previously known as. So uh, we're really excited about where we're at and progress is firing on all fronts. Fantastic. All right. Uh, any other uh, updates that uh, we need out there? Um, I'll just thank all the F chain participants too. I'm really, uh, really grateful um, to everybody who came out. And uh, this is going to be a big uh, experiment. And we hope that it's a successful one. And we're really excited to test it out. Um, but yeah, thank you for everyone who participated and, and uh, excited to kick this thing off. Beautiful. All right. Well, in that case, we are to the point in the call where it is a uh, open topic and or question point. So if anybody has a topic, question, comment, compliment, whatever you like, come off mute and ask it now. You can also uh, type in chat and I'll read that out for any, uh, anyone else who wants to hear it. Um, hey everybody, uh, this is probably going to expose my ignorance in a little bit, or in many ways, but um, we've been trying to explore new ways to make borders um, functional and bring more diverse use to the pocket network in general, just because we've seen a um, slowing down of uh, Business kind of related to what Art has said over these times about, you know, the, the, um, the transitory nature of like bringing on new chains. That's like kind of a one time deal. So, uh, suffice to say, we were talking to two different um, uh, open source AI protocols um, that are not yet set up with. Um, with any sort of incentive layers, they're basically both in the stage before um, having any sort of like protocol attached to incentivize their infrastructure. Um, and so we're trying to talk to them about how best we could like integrate Pocket and this this network of machines to help service um, self-service their networks. So um, I think this is just a call out to anybody who's here who's been working on these problems. I think Blade has been working on this. Um, and I think we're just looking for input from people who have touched on this problem before and also node operators that are interested in what this would look like to or just not what it looked like because we don't know understand it yet, but uh, to have that conversation with us as we talk to these um, AA projects on how we could service their needs. So I think it's more of a general inquiry if anybody else is looking into this, and then also just to call out if anybody's perked up by this information and is a node operator to uh, jump in and talk with me directly. Uh, I don't know. Oh, go ahead, Jinx. No, I was just saying, hell yeah. I love seeing uh, new use cases being explored. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Sasquatch, that's that's exciting. Um, I don't know if you knew that we actually launched or in like a very secretive kind of beta mode. Not, I won't say secretive, but kind of not like publicly accessible, just internal trials, uh, AI use case in the Grove portal. Um, it works. <laughs> is the short answer and in the logistics of how that works is the easiest way to think about pocket is that any call and response um, style api or rpc works just fine with pocket um, whether it's a restful api you know an rpc a grpc uh, call and response socketing is not your friend um, with with pocket at least in the current iteration 
So um, you'll have to do some magic and, and we can I, I, we can break down a little bit about how we were approaching the WebSockets problem. We kind of have a, a Morse solution to it. It's not perfect, um, but it, it would work. But yeah, I mean, you could list an API to like a flights website now if you wanted. You could list an, a, an LLM. You could list, you know, whatever you wanted. And just the, the pocket node literally exists to meter the traffic on that. So um, there, I don't think there's any secrets or anything. The only thing is, like, from an end user perspective that we noted is uh, two things. One, API, or AI calls are typically pretty heavy. Um, so they take a little bit longer to finish. And so you'll need to configure your gateway and work with the node operators on their timeout limits and expand them pretty drastically. Um, no, that uh, not L well. Yes and no. I'll come back to that question, Ramiro. Um, so you'll want to tune timeouts because requests take a long time to process, and they're typically higher than the limits that your gateway or your load balancer or or the pocket nodes will tolerate. You'll want to make sure that everybody's good on that. Um, and then the other thing is, from an end user perspective, what Ramiro is getting at. Like, you know how when you ask a question to ChatGPT, it kind of types out each word to you and you see that in the UI? That is not the experience that you'll get um, with, with the current state of Pocket. What you'll get instead is you're going to get, uh, you send the question and then it takes five seconds and then you get, you know, 10 paragraphs worth of answers in a single payload. So um, it's a little bit different and it can be jarring for some users, but depending on, you know, the use case, it, it is totally acceptable. It can, you can ask a question and you can get a response using Pocket and we have proved that that does work. However, that being said, you can certainly fake that from the UI layer by uh, caching the result and then using JavaScript to feed it out letter by letter. <laughs> <laughs> you could, but then it just takes so long from an end user perspective too. It's, it's like really, really jarring, I would think. Um, to Ramiro's question, what I will say is we have a solution to socketing on Morse and it's not pretty and it's not perfect. Um, we didn't explore it in terms of like LLM streaming. No, we did not do that, but we did do it with like a WebSocket, like an ETH subscribe, and I don't think that they're too technically different. Um, basically, you you have a lot of things to overcome technically, and I'm, I'm going to be totally open, and I'm happy to answer as many questions about this as you can because there's, there's no secrets here. Um, the way that we, we thought about it was, okay, when you query a node, you have an IP address or a URL of you know the node that you're interacting with. And so all we said was, okay, if you have an open WebSocket socket or you know the right ports open on that same machine for WebSockets or gRPC sockets or whatever, then what we'll do is for the WebSocket, we're just gonna replace HTTPS with WSS. And if that's open for you, what we'll do is the gateway will meter the usage of that socket. And at the end of the session, when we no longer have access to your node, we'll close that socket and we will blast your node with the number of requests that you responded to in that session. So and it, it's not it's not the user like sending you things. It's not the call. It's the number of responses you provide because that's the work that you're actually doing as a WebSocket provider. So it would be like, okay, you answered a million things in a session. Okay, here come a million requests at the last minute of the session. Let's make you whole and pay you. And what, we'll, or what we actually said too is we're gonna pay you double for those. So we will say, okay, you answered a million requests. We're gonna hit you two million times because you have to answer the requests that we're saying to give you get you paid and you answered the WebSocket requests. So that was kind of our, yes, uh, to TLT, TLDR, it, it is a gentleman's pact between the gateway and the node operators for sockets. Um, it's not perfect, but it is a protocol level limitation we have with Morse, and we want to be as fair and make you guys as whole as possible with any socket technology. Questions about that, Ramiro? Oh, you're all type. Okay. Uh, just just one piece of what you were just uh, ran through, um, Fred. And thanks for thanks for diving on that. But the one thing that caught my attention most is the WebSockets question because I thought 
we had talked on a different topic about WebSockets and that being supported as part of Path in the future. Is that? Yeah, it's absolutely still scheduled to be part of Path and Shannon. I'm saying in the current state of the network, it is not supported. Roger that. Um, and so that's like with Shannon full launch, so like Q1 next year. Yeah, I'm not sure on the timeline of the WebSocket feature on Shannon. I don't know if it's considered a launch feature or not. I can I can check on that, but at some point in Shannon, it will support sockets. And it's not just WebSockets, too. Remember, there are other uh, socketing interfaces like gRPC sockets and, and others. But theoretically, the gateway itself could be a socket and make RPC requests at the cost of latency, right? That's exactly correct. That's that was our rationale. Other questions about that or anything else? It's a comfortable silence for me, so I'm happy to hang here while y'all think about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Agreed, Jerry. We're coming up on the uh, last call here, so this is y'all's time. If you got something uh, that's on your mind, please feel free to drop it out. And otherwise, we'll wrap up here for a second. And uh, Sasquatch and Fred, if there is a, a workable solution, even if it's a high latency solution, is that something that could potentially be uh, packed into a, a standalone repo maybe that could be shared out to open source? Um, the work that was done on our end was all baked into portal. However, anything that we do going forward is all going to be on path, which is fully open source. Um, to reiterate though like you don't need anything special if you want to do like a call response um you know synchronous call right now so sounds good uh speaking of which uh this is something I've, I've heard a couple of times are there any other aspects of current development that could potentially be opened out to the community I've heard uh, a couple of folks uh, say that they were interested in doing more to help with the protocol, but not sure what the state of current like community tagged issues are. Uh, are there any needs that could be filled? I'm not the expert on the full protocol repo, but um, I think that uh, there are if i remember correctly there are some that were tagged like you said um and those are happy starter problems and if you find something that you want to contribute to it the prs are being monitored constantly and reviewed constantly so if, if you just go into the current iteration and you want to just pick something up and run with it um everything is pretty well spelled out in terms of the specification of what it's what's expected and I'm sure that would uh, that that would definitely be much appreciated. Every every outside contribution accelerates either uh, Shannon or Path. 
beautiful. So for those of you who have said in the past, hey, I wish this was more open sourced and I would be willing to help, there's your cue. Alrighty. Well, if nobody else has got any other questions or topics for us to chew on, I am more than happy to give you 25 minutes of your life back. We will see you all again next week. Same time, same channel.